a beautiful woman who goes to the same school as Tenjo Yuya, the main character. After meeting her, the woman warmly greets him, leaving Yuya confused about who she really is. As he tries to remember, it turns out that she is the woman he saved from two delinquents before. After Yuya rescued her, the woman was very grateful to him and searched for information about him, so she knows who he is and where he comes from. The woman, named Kori Hojo, is a member of the student council at Osai Kadami, an elite school where her father is the headmaster. When her father heard about Yuya saving his daughter, he wanted to invite him to attend Osai Kadami. However, Yuya hesitantly declined the invitation because he felt that he did not have good enough academic credentials to attend such a prestigious school. Suddenly, two teenagers who usually bully Yuya interrupted and claimed that they wanted to attend Osai Kadami because they had achievements in academics and sports. Kori firmly refused their offer because she knew they often bullied Yuya, her savior. She also knew about their bad behavior, which she had already investigated. Kori continued to talk to Yuya, explaining that Osai Kadami values personality more than academic performance, so Yuya's previous reason for declining the invitation was not a problem. However, because Yuya still had doubts, one of Kori's guards suggested that they take him to visit Osai Kadami to help him feel more confident. Kori took Yuya's hand and they left, hurrying to Osai Kadami. A narration about Osai Kadami follows a school that is famous for many students with skills in certain fields. Rumor has it that if someone can enter this academy, their future will be guaranteed. Yes, this is a super elite academy. After arriving at the school, Yuya was served a warm cup of tea and was greeted by the headmaster of Osai Kadami, who is none other than Kori's father. He also thanked and bowed to Yuya for saving his daughter. Of course, Yuya felt awkward and quickly stood up from his seat. Kori stated that when everyone else didn't care, only Yuya dared to act, which not everyone can do. The headmaster then offered Yuya to attend the school and asked for his opinion. However, once again, Yuya felt unworthy of attending such a school. The headmaster then advised him that anyone can be special if they work hard, keep trying new things and face challenges ahead. He also offered Yuya to try attending the school for just one day. A beautiful teacher named Saada came into the room, and the headmaster ordered her to take Yuya to her class so he could experience sitting in the school's classroom. The headmaster explained that even though Saada may look like this, she is a well-known scientist, and her explanations are easy to understand when she teaches in class. Saada sensei invited Yuya to her class, and although hesitant, he gathered his courage and introduced himself to the class. After finishing his introduction, Yuya looked at all the students in the class, but everyone fell silent. Faint voices from some of the female students could be heard admiring how handsome Yuya was. Seeing Yuya still nervous, Saada encouraged him and invited him to sit at the desk provided. In another class, Kori was worried about Yuya and hoped that he would feel comfortable with everyone else. Returning to his own class, Yuya felt that the atmosphere was similar to the previous class he attended, but the students in this class were far more active and fun. Lunchtime arrived, and Yuya was surrounded by curious students asking many questions about him. He was confused and felt awkward trying to answer them. Then a male student named Ryo Igarashi intervened and told them not to bother Yuya. He then invited him to have lunch in the cafeteria, and Yuya agreed. Upon arriving at the cafeteria, Yuya was surprised to see the menu, which looked very delicious and was inexpensive. He thought it was heaven. He and Ryo ordered their food, and then another student named Shingo called Yuya to sit and eat with him. As they enjoyed their meal, Yuya felt like everyone else in the cafeteria was looking at him, probably because he was wearing a different uniform. But Ryo explained that many people were looking at him because of his appearance. Ryo and Yuya both hadn't joined any clubs yet, but Shingo was different. He had joined the game club. Later that evening, Yuya returned to the principal's office and met with him. The principal asked for his opinion about the school, and Yuya replied that the school was amazing and the lessons were easy to understand. But what impressed him the most was how the students there seemed to enjoy their days. They treated him kindly and didn't alienate him. 
The principal asked again if he was willing to attend the school and said that he was very suited to it. Finally, Yuya was convinced and decided to study at the school. As he left the principal's office, Corey was waiting for him outside. Corey was very grateful that Yuya decided to attend the school. She then invited him to visit the shopping area with her, which was very popular because it was well known on TV. Corey explained that she rarely hangs out with her friends because of her family and father's work, but she really wanted to go there with Yuya. They decided to buy the famous crepes in the area. Before eating the crepes, Yuya was still worried that if he ate too much, he would return to his previous fat body. He then asked Corey how she knew it was him because when he saved her, he still had a fat appearance unlike his current body. It turns out that Corey only saw Yuya's gaze, which according to her, emanated the same aura. They both looked very intimate there, calling each other by their first names and also exchanging their crepes. A day after Yuya visited Osayakadami, he decided to enter another world again. As he opened the door to the other world and stepped inside, he still felt afraid of the monsters that came to attack him. However, with the complete equipment he was wearing, he was able to defeat those monsters very easily, and now his level had reached 235. According to him, it was still very slow to level up, and he thought maybe it was because he always stayed near his house. He was curious to face stronger monsters outside. For the first time, he set foot outside his house and immediately heard someone screaming. He became alert and drew his weapon while heading towards the source of the sound. When he arrived, he saw a person lying in a pool of blood in front of him. And there was also a strong-looking monster with a high level. Upon the monster, Yuya was surprised to see a helpless woman hiding behind a tree. He immediately attacked the monster with his spear and managed to defeat it. Yuya then realized that there were also original humans in that world. When he let his guard down, another monster attacked him. Yuya was thrown off by the monster's attack and felt that it was very strong. However, he tried to attack the monster with all his strength using various weapons, and finally managed to defeat it. Immediately, Yuya approached the injured and dying woman he had seen earlier. As he came to help her, the woman fainted and lost consciousness. Yuya felt confused about what he should do, but suddenly someone from a distance called out the name Lexia, which was likely the name of the woman. A group of men who called out to her quickly found her, and they were very grateful to know that she was still alive. Meanwhile, before they arrived, Yuya used an item that made him disappear, and he watched them from a distance.